Welcome into the Business on Purpose podcast, where our goal is to liberate you from the chaos of working in your business. It's Scott Beebe, the head coach, the founder of the Business on Purpose platform. And I want to share with you something that I've been a little bit more vocal about here in the last couple of years, mainly uh, with close friends and also a couple of times from a uh, kind of a mid-sized group setting. Uh, I've talked about this at our church when I was asked to teach about a year and a half ago um, on a Sunday morning, January 1, 2016, I think. You can go back and listen to it, Live Oak Christian Church. Uh, By the way, I do want to let you know, for those of you who are just new to the Business on Purpose platform, we very much integrate our faith and our work. And so this is going to be a an episode that is heavy on faith verbiage. I just want to tell you that up front. And it's got 100% applicability to your work, to your life. In fact, one of our core values is the as a business on purpose platform is work is faith. And we'll explain that at some point. But I just wanted you to know that right up front. Uh, in full disclosure, I struggle with, and I get asked quite a bit about this issue of fear, being afraid, not necessarily afraid to walk out in the dark, afraid, afraid of what if this all collapses tomorrow? What if all the clients leave tomorrow? What if I owe 10 times the amount of taxes that I'm actually paying and I'm just unaware of it? What if my house gets foreclosed on six years down the road? What if, what if, what if? In in fear, if you don't know what it sounds like, it's usually, uh, it's usual prerequisite is what if. And so if you're in your mind are going through a series of what ifs, there's a good chance that that's fear. And what's important, and this is what I want to walk you through, what I've been walking through, and so we'll kind of walk through this together, is the reality of what fear is, and then the reality of what you can do with it. But I do want to let you know that this is not a hoorah episode where I get you pumped up, fired up, ready to go. You, you, you run out of the locker room, and then you, you storm the world. You dominate the world. This is an episode where I want you to just kind of be still and think through this. And then once it's over here in just a couple of minutes, I want you to turn it off and just process where you at in this. Fear comes from a root word, P-H-O-B-O-S. You can pronounce it Phobos, Fabos, Phobos, Fabos. <laughs> P-H-O-B-O-S. It's where we get our roots of, you know, Phobia. We've got a phobia, arachnophobia. That's the fear of, I believe, spiders. Is that right? And there's a, a lot of phobias. Well, that's where we get that. Our word fear is from the root of phobia. And if you drill down on it a little bit, you really find out that what the word means is a variety of meanings in the original language, based on how it's used. But there's, if we look at how it's used, one way that's really intriguing to me as I look at it is the word to withdraw. So the word phobos or phobos literally means to withdraw from something. So when we have fear, it's almost a, it leads to an action, and that action is withdrawal. Now, withdrawal with drug addiction is good, but from what I understand, there's a lot of pain associated with it. Withdrawing from a social crowd for introverts can be good, but if for too long, it's painful. But there are other things when we think about withdrawal. It's not good. When the government withdraws money from your account, you don't like that. So withdrawal, there are times that a withdrawal can be positive and times that it can be negative. I do believe in the element of fear that the term withdrawal is seen as something that is not necessarily healthy. And so we're in a situation, we're in a risky bit of territory, and what we do is we retreat, we withdraw. And so I want you to think about the things you're fearful about. What are they causing you to do? Are they causing you to withdraw? It, 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 is fear in your marriage or fear in your family causing you to withdraw actually from your spouse? It, is, is fear that your kids are, are, are going to be raised up into a situation where they're just going to turn out to be heathens? And so what you do is you withdraw and you try to put up all of these boundaries and protections around them that are self-made. What about growth in your business? You know 
not all of you, but many of you, you know that if your business grows, it has the potential to serve new people. But do you withdraw from that? Fear has an element of withdrawal. So what do you do with it? What have I tried to do with it? Well, I'll be honest with you. I've told people before and eventually we'll have the talk that I recently gave on this topic and I'll post it on this podcast here so you can hear the full talk. There's a quote, we'll call it a verse, in the latter part of the Bible. It's a, it's a man who walked with Jesus. His name is John. And it's in one of his small, small letters. And he wrote in there that love that is perfected throws fear away. Love that is perfected, I think maybe meaning that we have full reality of, we start to really grasp what this love is. Cue the 80s song. I want to know what... Okay, sorry. But this perfected love, what does it do? It throws fear away. In many versions, it says perfect love casts out all fears. So if we looked at the root of fear, which is phobos, phobos, however you decide to pronounce it, then you look at the root and the generated word behind casting away, throwing away. (laughs) I thought it was really interesting when looking it up. there, There was actually a segment of it that means to slap Wow, I can wrap my hands around that. So in other words, the way I took it was, if we truly understand the way that God loves us, that's that perfect love, then we will slap the moments where we feel like we want to withdraw. We will slap it in the face. I prefer to call it punch in the mouth. You know, I love the quote from Mike Tyson. He says, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. (laughs) Yeah. So this love that is perfected, when you realize the level of compassion, mercy, grace, um, affection that God has for you, not affection in a weird way, but an affection in a sincere way, when you're, uh, when you're a bit taken by that, then what it motivates you to do is to slap fear, slap the withdrawalness in the face and throw it away. So that's what I want to encourage you to do. I want you to think about what it is that you're afraid of right now. Will all the clients leave? Is your spouse not pulling his or her into the bargain? Are you not pulling your end of the bargain towards them? Are you afraid that you're going to mess your kids up? What, What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of you're going to run out of money? Why don't we punch that idea in the mouth? Why don't instead we take the mindset that, no, we, we are going to do this. My marriage is going to be healed. The, 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 uh, the, the resources, the funds will be there. The business will grow. The clients will remain. In fact, we're going to double down on it. Not only is that going to happen, but I'm going to one-up it. I'm going to slap it in the face. I'm going to say no to withdraw. I'm going to realize the compassion, the mercy, the genuineness of love that God has for me. And I'm going to walk in that. I appreciate you listening. I hope this is an encouragement to you. That's what we're here to do as we liberate you from the chaos of working in your business. I'll see you next time on the Business on Purpose podcast.